In an alternate reality, humans and aliens find themselves coexisting on Earth. After finding himself slowly turning into an alien, this man finds a liquid that's both his cure and the key to the alien's survival. Which will he choose first? Hello and welcome to our channel. Today we'll recap and review a science fiction action thriller film, District 9. Let's check it out. The movie begins with interviews for a documentary news report about the aliens inhabiting Earth. This begins back in 1982 when an extraterrestrial ship lands on Earth. For months, nothing came out and nothing happened despite this strange and out-of-this-world phenomenon. Growing tired of inactivity and uncertainty of what this world means to humanity, the government at the time forced themselves in. Okay, in another scenario, can't we just leave it as it is? This is just wishing for an alien invasion. Good thing, what they found is not some monster or an army of alien soldiers. Inside this ship is a huge swarm of weakening aliens due to malnourishment and poor living conditions. Due to the pressure of the public eye, the government had no choice but to conduct health support and transfer them to a terrestrial camp called District 9. This initiative didn't last long since supporting aliens was never their priority. The population of these aliens, now called prawns, grew up to million and over time the terrestrial camp soon became a slum. At first the humans were fascinated with their presence but eventually they got fed up with sharing their space with the prawns. These aliens do not possess any leadership qualities, making them destructive and aggressive towards humans. Because of this, they were vulnerable to organized crimes and scams such as overpriced supplies and interspecies prostitution. They also engaged in illegal arms trade, even if humans cannot use their weapons because of the biometric trigger imprinted on their weapons, only allowing prawns to use them. As a result, they also fall victim to being hunted for their flesh, as some syndicates consume their flesh as they believe it will give them the ability to use their weapon. The citizens rioted to ship them off the city, however, However, this is impossible as the ship they came with is inoperable and the command module mysteriously disappeared. Due to this growing tension, the government takes on another initiative. They contacted a weapon manufacturing company, Multinational United, to take charge of relocating the prawns into a camp that is 200 kilometers outside the city. Piet, the managing director, appoints his son-in-law, Wickes, as the field officer with direct command in the relocation. Of course, nepotism. The backbone of business and other industries. Despite being unqualified, Wikus easily takes one of the most crucial positions an MNU employee could ever have. Let's see where this will take him. This initiative may look like it was done for humanitarian reasons, but the truth is this is just a mere publicity stunt and a cover-up to retrieve alien weaponry. As a formality, they head to the camp and hand out eviction and relocation notices. While Wickus is casually handing out notices and using cat food to lure the prawns who have grown obsessed with it, the soldiers are shooting those who are uncooperative and aggressive towards them. Wickus sees Abisanjo, a crippled but psychopathic head of the Nigerians residing in District 9, and orders everyone on the team to ignore him. While roaming around, they stumble upon a shack full of alien eggs and burn them to the ground. While all this chaos is happening, three prawns, Christopher, his young son CJ, and Christopher's friend Paul are in a garage dump searching for fuel that will work with their technology. They head back to Paul's shack to continue Christopher's two-year-old plan, but they get interrupted when Wickus arrives with the relocation notice. Christopher tries to hide the canister as he quietly exits the shack, but Wickus still finds it and accidentally sprays himself in the face. He plays it off thinking it is harmless and confiscates the canister. While Christopher and CJ were spared despite their refusal to cooperate, Paul is killed by the MNU soldiers when he attempted to resist. After sustaining an injury and ingesting an unknown alien substance, Wickus ends the inspection as he felt sick. His fingernails also fell off and his face grows paler with every passing of time. His condition gets progressively worse when they found that his hand transformed into an alien claw. Because of this strange transformation, Wickus is brought to MNU headquarters where several experts examine his situation. After 16 hours of his infection, MNU experimented on him and tested if he could use alien weaponry since his nerves have fused with the alien claw. He succeeds in using the weapon which satisfies MNU but frightens Wickus because of the dehumanizing experiment he's going through. He was even forced to shoot a prawn which is against his morals. This is where nepotism will bring you. Once you grow an alien claw, your father-in-law will strip you of your dignity and force you to undergo human experimentation. After a few more tests, the experts discover that his DNA is the perfect balance between alien and human and he's slowly turning into a prawn. Upon hearing that Wickus' body has biotechnology worth billions of dollars, Piet authorizes the harvesting of every single part of his body and selling them to corporations and government bodies for their own experimentation. Just before the operation, Wickus manages to escape and flees from the headquarters to head home. However, the MNU operatives are already waiting for him there. MNU has also announced in the local news that he has a contagious disease caused by prolonged intercourse with a prawn, causing all of his friends to push him away. Seeing that he's turned into a fugitive and has nowhere else to go, he goes to District 9 to seek refuge. By hiding from MNU operatives, he accidentally enters Christopher and CJ's dwelling place. He begs them for help before fainting. 
Upon seeing his condition, Christopher figures out that he has ingested the fuel and shows Wickus the command module that has been missing for almost two decades. He also reveals to Wickus his plan to reactivate their ship with the fuel he's been formulating for 20 years. Once their ship is reactivated, Wickus can be cured and get back to his normal. Unfortunately, it is the same fuel that he confiscated and is now in MNU's possession. Despite thinking that retrieving it would be impossible, Wickus wants to do it as soon as possible since his transformation into a prawn is accelerating. The next day, he heads to Abisandro's place to buy some weapons. However, the gang leader is more interested in his alien arm so he can consume it for his health. Sensing he is in grave danger, Wickus activates an alien weapon that impresses Abisandro as no human has ever done it before. Before escaping, Wickus steals some weapons while Abisandro threatens him that his gang will come for him. With these weapons, they attack the headquarters and successfully breach the lab. However, armed MNU operatives are already pursuing them from behind. Wickus successfully retrieves the canister, but Christopher is distraught upon seeing his kind strapped to the bed, almost unrecognizable because of the ruthless experimentations that were done to them. He comes back to his senses when he remembers that CJ will be left alone if he dies and makes a makeshift bomb so they could escape. This explosion provokes the rest of the MNU operatives who are currently hunting them down from a helicopter. They reach their shack, but their alliance is torn apart when Wickus hears that Christopher plans to return first to their planet before curing his arm, which will take him three years before he can return to normal. This upsets him, so he knocks Christopher out and starts the command module on his own to integrate it again into the mothership. However, MNU attacked it with missiles, causing it to fall back to the ground. They arrest both Christopher and Wickus, who are in separate cars while CJ hides inside the command module. Just then, Abisandro's group attacks them, abducts Wickus, and brings him to their leader. While an intense gunfight is taking place outside, Abisandro is preparing to cut off Wickus' arm for consumption. Fortunately, CJ was just in time and activated an alien battlesuit inside their lair and killed everyone, including Abisandro. Wickus uses the same battlesuit to defend himself from the MNU operatives and fly to the ship. Upon hearing that MNU soldiers are planning to kill Christopher, he comes back and rescues both him and his son. Despite the rain of bullets, the three of them run to the command modules so they can reach the mothership. However, upon seeing that they will not make it due to the increasing troops around them, Wickus volunteers to hold them off so Christopher and CJ can reach it safely. Before leaving, Christopher promises that he will come back to him and immediately runs to reactivate the Fallen Command module. With Wickus' help, who is slaying everyone with the machine, the two successfully reach the mothership. However, the intense gunfight tore the battlesuit apart, making him vulnerable to the leader of the operatives who was about to kill him. All of a sudden, several prawns defend him by attacking the leader. This is so ironic, but eye-opening for him. In the beginning, he discriminates against the prawns and threatens them inside their own home. Now, not only did he seek shelter inside their territory, but they're also the ones standing up for him. Who would have thought that the creature he wanted to desperately get rid of would be the one to save him? Upon seeing that their mothership, which has been dormant for 20 long years, finally takes off, the prawns couldn't help but marvel. It's not just them, but the whole town is in awe. The people in the documentary series continued to theorize about Christopher's next movement. That day was also the last time they'd seen Wilkes, who has now gone into hiding. Several conspiracy theories arise from this event, however, the truth is nowhere near that. Wilkes believes that Christopher will come back to him in three years' time, whether it is to declare war on humankind or rescue everyone. He knows he will come back and he will be saved. As for him, he is fully transformed and continues to express his love for his wife by leaving the metal roses that he crafted himself. After this event, MNU is currently on trial for the illegal genetic experimentations they've been doing underground. The demolition of District 9 and the relocation of the prawns are also successful. They are now currently in District 10, where their population is now up to 2.5 million and continues to grow. This is one of those movies with unique and realistic takes on extraterrestrial invasion. If you like an alien movie with social commentary on the negative effects of capitalism and xenophobia, well, you found a new movie for your watch list. If you're not particular about any of those things, this movie has action-packed scenes and great alien design. I kid you not. So don't you dare miss it and enjoy it with your friends and family. Please subscribe to our channel to be notified when we upload. And don't forget to suggest movies you want us to recap in the future in the comments down below.